Geez, I've just come out here. Melbourne has had such shit weather recently. Thought I'd come back inside. It is simply too wet to do anything out there. Hi everyone, my name is Helen Blunden and I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. I was looking on YouTube and saw Renee from the Left Handed Book Reader do this hot or not book tag. And I thought to myself, hey, that's a great idea. I'm gonna do the same here. So what it is, is that from A to Z, you talk about different themes of the books that you have read and you share them here and you say if they're hot or not. So let's start with the first letter of the alphabet, A, where it is on audiobooks. Now, when I thought about A, as an ex-Navy person, I'm thinking semaphore. Okay, what's a semaphore for A? That's, I think it was, I'm trying to remember, uh, left hand down, right hand down to the side. It goes in a circle anyway. But I did learn Morse code, so A, Morse code, dita, dita, audiobooks, okay, dita, right, audiobooks, hot or not, for me, not, I know for many people they are the bee's knees, but for me, no, I do walk a lot, and I do listen to various shows and podcasts a lot, but not audiobooks, unfortunately, Audiobooks for me, I find them a bit too long and also I prefer to listen to the audiobooks in the voices of the author. Uh, the last book that I borrowed through BorrowBox, which is an app that our library uses for us to borrow books, audiobooks for free, um, was John Cleese's Creativity and also uh, Eudora Welty's The Optimist Daughter, that was a 1973 Pulitzer Prize winning book. And I love that book. It was pretty slow, but it was a beautiful book. And I listened to that via um, Borrow Box. Usually I don't listen to audiobooks simply because I'm the type of person who has to stop and think about, about them. And when I stop and think, I need to write notes. I need to take notes. And I haven't figured out that right knack or the right tool in order to be able to do that. So if you're someone out there who listens to audiobooks and knows how to kind of stop and take notes and what kind of tools they're using, please let me know. I'd be interested to find out. I recently found out that there is another audiobook um, app called Libro, Libro FM, where you can actually buy audiobooks from independent booksellers if you want that. So for me, audiobooks is not. Okay, the next letter is B. B stands for Bildungsroman, which is a German word for dealing with a person's formative and spiritual education. When I think of B, I think of Morse code B, which is, I'm trying to think, da, di, di, di. Okay, so if A is di, da, da, di, di, di. Okay, that, I think that's right. <laughs> I've got to revisit Morse code. Uh, righto, Buildings Roma Roman. Uh, and I have to think, aren't all books like that? Is that hot or not for me? Of course it's hot. I mean, look at the title of this YouTube channel. It's Life Lessons in Books. So part of me thinks that is there any book that doesn't deal with someone going through some kind of spiritual journey? Uh, so if I was to think of... Uh, Bildung's Roman novels uh, that I have read that have made some kind of impact on me uh, because they were so hot, I would say, uh, two books. The first one, Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye, which I loved. I became obsessed with this book. I carried it around in my handbag for months. I read it three times consecutively. I never wanted this to end. I saw myself as the Holden Caulfield character. I love this book. And I know it is a book that a lot of people might say, well, we did it in school. I hated it. I don't want Holden Caulfield. Is this a shit? Well, I don't know. I don't feel that way. And the second one is A.B. Facey. This is an Australian book called A Fortunate Life. This goes through uh, a very difficult upbringing of A.B. Facey and the fact that uh, he's an orphan and he goes through uh, with different families and also a very hard life in Australia. It is quite a, 
a, a big book. This is a classic Australian book. I cannot tell you how many times I have bought this book and given this as gifts to people. Such an important Australian classic. For those of you who are interested in this, I would highly, highly recommend it. I'll just give you a snippet of what it's about. Born in 1894, Facey lived through the rough frontier life of a sheep farmer, survived the gore of Gallipoli, raised a family through the Depression, and spent 60 years with his beloved wife, Evelyn. Despite enduring hardships, we can barely imagine today, Facey always saw his life as a fortunate one. Brilliant, brilliant book. If this is not Bildung's Romaine, then I don't know what is. So I would say hot, hot, hot okay the next one is c c for charlie no it's not c for children's books c in morse code let me think of my navy training duck dip duck dip c charlie righto children's books sorry no children therefore no children's books <laughs> uh mm. Actually, I would say children's books are hot only if you can learn something from them as an adult as well. So I would say these are hot for me simply because I love history. I love horrible histories. I've got the entire collection, which is for children, but I lo love this collection simply because I've learned so much history from it. Just to give you an example, when my husband and I were traveling through the UK and Europe, these are the books that I took along with me, all bought along the way. They are the books that I would read while on tours simply because they were amusing and I could hold information quite easily. Okay, moving right along. D, D for digital, Delta, Da, did it in Morse code. <laughs> If you're that way inclined. Okay, D, digital, is it hot or not? I would say, I'd like to say not, but technically it is hot. And the reason I say that is because it is so useful to have books uh, on a Kindle or to come with you on a Surface Pro that you could just read anytime, anywhere, if you're on travels, if you're on um, commuting, where you don't have to take the book with you. Now, I find that I usually just read the Kindle, mainly for non-fiction books, because I like to take notes in them. And also, I read some books in French or Greek, and this is where the Kindle comes in very handy, because you can just simply tap on the word that you don't understand and it translates it for you. It's brilliant. I like the fact that you can take notes on this as well. It is very portable and you can have your books, your library with you. But do I say that I only read on Kindle? No, by all means, no. I do prefer the hard copy book as well. But these are tools that help us uh, with our reading journeys. And I've never been someone to say you've got to use one or the other. I simply see them as tools to help in the reading journey. So digital, hot. Right, next one is E, E for experimental, hot or not? I'd say not. But having said that, I have read some experimental books and writing, which I loved. Now, E, E, E for echo, E for, hang on, what's it in Morse code? Deep. Oh, that's nice and easy. Deep. Right, okay experimental this book i recently read this book in fact i've just finished it i have created a 22 minute review of this book this was entirely experimental flames by robbie arnett debut novel australian author extremely experimental magical realism a bit bizarre hot and not Depends. It's going to be good writing for me. Right, moving right along. F. F for fantasy. F for foxtrot. F for... Did it, da, did, did it, da, did. Right, that's Morse code. Um, hot or not? Not. Not for me, unfortunately. I don't do fantasy. 
uh, which is interesting because we have got lots of books here at home simply because everything I like my husband despises everything he likes I despise <laughs> he's for fantasy I'm not not hot right the next one is G G for graphic novels G for golf my favorite sport G in Morse code great Gatsby da da dit that's a good mnemonic to use da da dit great Gatsby <laughs> That's how I remembered Morse code. Anyway, uh, righto. So graphic novels. Me, not. I do not read graphic novels. Although when I was in France, I saw that they had a whole heap of different books in graphic novel format, which I loved. Now, my husband, it would be hot for him. He's got, like, we've got tons of graphic novels. For me, it's not. For him, yes, it is. And I would say... A graphic novel that I liked was the fantastic story of uh, what happened in Iran and it's called Persepolis. Highly, highly recommend for a graphic novel, but usually it's not for me. Right, H. H for horror in the phonetic alphabet. Hotel. H in Morse code. Hippity hop. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. Dee, dee, dee. Four dits, four dits, H, horror. Hot or not? Not, not for me. I simply don't do horror. I hate it. I don't want anything to do with it. If you want horror, basically just turn on the TV and watch the news, I reckon. So, but having said that, we have got the entire collection of Lehman. That is all horror up there. We've got the entire collection of Stephen King, all horror. But guess what? Not for me. It's hot for my husband, not for me. <laughs> okay, I. I is for inspirational. And when I think of I, Morse code, that's nice and easy. Did it. I did it. And I, inspirational, hot or not. Mm, not hot, not hot, not, not, not for me. Unless people are going through some kind of personal transformation um, in their journey, but this inspiration must not come from some spiritual being such as Jesus, Christ, God, some such. Um, I'm not very religious, so inspirational to me means some kind of religious book. I don't uh, do that unless that person has gone through some personal transformation journal, journey, which is inspirational, such as biographies that are real, but if the entity that made them do it is mentioned like Jesus or Muhammad or whoever it was, no, I'm not interested in that. Okay, J is the next one. J in Morse. That one I can't remember. De da da da, I think. Anyway, I could be wrong for that one. J here stands for journalism. And is that hot or not? For me, hot 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 i uh like to read a lot um about journalism and also about politics and i would say that yes for journalism and some of the books that i have uh recently read in particular journalism in the last few years here in australia has been really interesting because we've had so many elections and it's been a very interesting time politically uh, in Australia. Journalists that I read are Nikki Savas, um, and these are her recent books all about uh, our politicians. Um, he's our Prime Minister currently, Albanese. He was our previous Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. So she's written uh, these three books on Australian politics. So I really like Nikki Savas. Um, also, my book that I did enjoy was uh, Barry Jones, What is to be Done? Political Engagement and Saving the Planet, where he believes that we do need to be politically astute and politically aware in order to understand what is happening in our world. Highly recommended. So I would say journalism, very hot for me. 
Oh, I have to add, if you're interested in journalism and want to read some very good articles about different, obviously, political situations and the world as it is, I highly recommend this online publication called The Conversation. It is written not with fake news in mind. The All the articles are researched well. They are different conversations happening all around the world. So you can have the conversation in France, conversation in the US, conversation in Australia. Really excellent journal for anyone to read if they're interested in journalism. K, K for kitsch, hot or not, K for kilo, K for, what's it in Morse code? Di, da, da. Is that right? No. Da, di, da. Right, kitsch, hot or not? Not, not for me. Di, da, di, 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 da, di, di, L. L for library, hot or not? Definitely hot. My entire YouTube channel is based on library books. D definitely hot. The next one is M for mystery, phonetic alp alphabet Mike or da da, Morse code. Um, mystery, hot or not? I would say not. I usually don't read mystery books unless they are mysteries of the universe or no, no, actually not, not even that, <laughs> not. The next one is N for nonfiction, hot or not? Well, for me, it would be hot, 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 hot. So some years back, I used to read a lot of nonfiction. I still do, but not as much as fiction. I read nonfiction simply just to keep up with my area of expertise, which was learning and development. I had, my profession was in the field of corporate learning and development. So I had to read up with, you know, latest learning theories and stuff like that. But a few years ago, something flipped in my head and I thought, enough, Helen, enough reading about other people's theories, other people's hacks, other people's frameworks, other people's ideas of how learning should be or is. It is up to you now to try and glean this stuff yourself. Come up with your own theories, come up with your own ways, not for the purposes of selling them. No, I don't care about that, but for the purposes of just simply doing and experiencing it in life. I'm pontificating now anyway. But uh, so I started reading more fiction as a way of being able to experience the other without actually walking in their shoes, so to speak. If I can't actually do a George Orwell and actually go out there and experience it for myself, I may as well read about it and then empathise with the characters that I'm reading about. Ask questions, critique, reason, pontificate and so forth. So that to me is learning. So nonfiction, I would say, is hot, but my areas of nonfiction, the subjects that I read, have drastically varied since a few years ago, where it was all around adult learning. Now it is completely different. Wherever my interests lie, I will read. Hot. What letter are we up to now? O. O for omnibus. O for Oscar. O in Morse code is easy. Da, 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 because SOS is di, 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 da, 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 di, 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 da, da, di, di, di. Just remember that if you're ever tied up somewhere and you need to communicate and you don't have a mobile phone with you, just tap on maybe something metal. Di, 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 da, 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 di, 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 da, 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 that's O. O for omnibus. Okay, I would say not hot. It's not a word we hear a lot nowadays in books, but this is a book I recently read called Clan Lads and Almanac. So I thought Almanac, Omnibus, mm, kind of similar. It is a book by Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish, which are the blokes who are in that show, uh, Outlander. God, that took a while. <laughs> Outlander, they created this book and Almanac, which are all the events and activities that happen in Scotland. Uh, through every day of the month. Very interesting reading. I would say this is hot. I would say in general, though, I don't read omnibuses, so not hot. 
P is next, P for poetry, hot or not? I would say not, but it's got to be hot. Me, not, and I'm kicking myself that it should be a hot. I just don't read poetry enough. I wish I did. The latest poetry book I did read was Sylvia Plath's uh, poetry called Ariel. Uh, God, this was sad. This was really depressing reading. I would read her poems and I didn't understand them. I didn't understand them. But as I kept reading them over and over and over, they really depressed me. So there's something in there. I think, I think poetry is one of my biggest limitations. I wish I could read it and understand it. I don't know where to start with poetry. I don't know whether I'm missing that poetry gene. I would say it's not, but I wish it was hot. Right, the next one is Q for quests, hot or not. Before we go there, I'm just kind of thinking about the Morse code. This is a hard one. Da, da, di, da, I think it is. Da, da, di, da. Uh, Quebec in the phonetic alphabet. Righto, quests, not hot for me. Look, in the past, I did read these questy books like, you know, Paul Curlow and I mentioned The Celestine Prophecy. Not anymore. No, not for me. Not hot. Righto, the next one is R. R for romance. R in the phonetic alphabet is Romeo. Hey, they go together. Romeo, romance. Is romance hot or not for me? Well, technically, nah. Couldn't be bothered. Couldn't care less about romance. Don't really care. No. 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 Okay, enough. Let's move on. What's the next one? Right, next one. S. That's three. Morse code S, Sierra, science fiction. I write here depends. Hot or not? Depends. Let me explain. I would say science fiction is hot, but it really depends on what science fiction books we're talking about. I prefer the science fiction ones that are related to themes that we are currently living in today. They might be set in the recent future. There might be elements of what we're seeing in the world today. They're quite dystopian. The science fiction related to whole new different worlds out there on different planets. It's usually not what I prefer. So I would say science fiction is hot. There goes my telephone. I'm not answering it. It's probably someone selling me something. It's an old fashioned phone. Because I still have got the old phone. They're not going to... T, T for tango, T for translation, T in Morse code, that's fairly simple, I know that one, da, just da. T for translation, hot or not, I would say definitely yes. A lot of my videos here on this YouTube channel are translations into English from authors. I've had a variety of different authors, Dutch, German, South American, Italian, French, you name it. There's a lot of reviews that I've done on this channel that are all translations. I would say hot, hot, hot. And in particular, I believe that books that are translated give us access and help us learn about different ways of living and different situations and different, I guess, history, cultures of other countries other than the country that we're living in or other Western Western nations. So hot, hot, hot for translations. <laughs> Crikey, you. We're already on to you. This is taking ages. You for uniform. Did it da? Did da? No, it's not you for uniform. It's you for u Ubermensch. So basically any books where the human man is bigger than Ben Hur superhuman hot or not not hot not interested i can't remember the last time i read a book where that happened no that would be science fiction wouldn't it hmm. no righto moving right along v v for 
Victorian books published in 1837 to about 1901. Are they hot or not? Before we go there, V for Victor, V for Victorian, V for, I can't remember what it is in Morse code. It's one of the long ones. Anyway, so V for Victorian, yes, 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 yes. Hot, 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 hot. A lot of the books that I review on this channel are, are classics. I would say uh, recently also reviewed Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, anything from Charles Dickens. Next year I'll be reading more classics. I want to read Don Quixote. So technically that's not Victorian per se, but it was written around that same uh, era. So yeah, Victorian, definitely hot. Now W, da, no, sorry, that's actually D, Da 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 da. God, I'm an idiot. Okay, we we W is for Western. Hot or not? I gotta I gotta tell you, definitely not hot. Definitely not hot. No, not at all. Western. No. <laughs> So moving right along, X is for X-rated. In the phonetic alphabet, it is X-ray. In the Morse code, I think it is da di di da. I think I'm not entirely sure, so don't hold me to account. So X X-rated, hot or not? Definitely not hot. No, 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 no. Remember what I said about romance? It's exactly the same. Not that X-rated and romance are exactly the same. No, I'm not saying that at all. But no interest whatsoever. Anything that is a highly violent or highly graphic of a sexual nature, I've got zero interest in it. When it affects or impacts my health and well-being, no interest in one whatsoever. I'm not interested in the ideas. I'm not interested in, I guess, trying to read into things. If it is, I guess, portrayed in that manner, uh, of that highly graphical nature seriously it's not hot for me not at all however having said that there what about banned books um we do have some banned books here uh one that stands to mind is uh, american psycho it is a book that i've never read we have got it and that was banned but it is a book that it's I'm never likely to read. I've got zero interest in it because of the violent nature. So X-rated for me would be no go, no interest, none whatsoever. Um, no, zero, zilch. Okay, what's next? Why is next Yankee or actually young adult? A hot or not? For me, no, I don't read any young adult books. I guess if you could call the Harry Potter series young adult, that would be the only uh, book series I have read as for young adults. So really, I've got nothing else to add in this because it's not a genre I read and nor can actually comment on it. So not hot. Oh my God, we've reached Z. Z, Z, Z. Z in Morse code is da da di, di, I think don't hold me to that because I can't remember it's, it's a long alphabet isn't it I'm getting a bit tired so Z here is zeitgeist it is the spirit or mood of the time do I think they are hot or not definitely hot so uh, zeitgeist yes definitely hot I'm thinking about books like George Orwell's 1984, although that could be science fiction. But I'm also thinking about books that are slightly set in the future, that are slightly dystopian, that we're heading towards that world. Uh, the ones that stand to mind are Ishiguro's Clara and the Sun, uh, also Never Let Me Go. Um, so maybe they are kind of mood pieces for the day. I know that there's a lot more books. But I would say Zeitgeist for me is definitely hot. So that is it. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. I've gone through the entire alphabet from A to Z to talk about what's hot and what's not in the world of, well, in Helen's world of books. Let me know what you think. 
Hope you found it amusing. Hope I gave you some book recommendations or some ideas of different apps to use. And also, I'm always interested in what you think. What are some recommendations that you think I should read in the areas that I thought was not hot? I don't want to know the X-rated stuff. Really not interested. All the violent stuff. <laughs> but I uh, appreciate you sharing your time to sit and listen and watch. Thank you for listening and watching. Bye for now.